Hello. Hello. Hey guys. How are you guys doing? What's up, Bigfoot? Thanks for coming. Hey Wing Chun, how's it going? Hey Peepzilla. What's up, Katie? Glad you could join. Hey Greek Yogurt. Hope. What's up, Hope? Hey, sunny side up. How's it going? Yeah. How was your Thanksgiving, guys? Mine was pretty cool. Mine was pretty cool. We always have like a big family get together uh, at Thanksgiving. Well, not the last couple of years because of COVID, but um, this year we did. So I think this year was the first time that the entire like extended family got together, which was pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of drinking. We didn't eat turkey, but we ate a lot of um, Vietnamese and Asian food. What's up, Nikki? Hey, Amy. How's it going? What's up, Lady Koi? Oh, I also had. Oh, I also had. Um, I had bear meat. Okay, which is pretty good. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it was pretty good. Um. Yeah, bear meat tastes like. Tastes like uh, just beef. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference, but I'm not that good with food. But uh, yeah, it tastes a little bit like tri-tip. Not bad. What's up, Malik? Do, 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 do. Where do you get bear meat from? Uh, I don't know. Someone in the family got bear meat. Uh, someone knows a guy. They know a guy who hunts bears, I guess. I don't know. I don't know where you get it. So I think you need a license to hunt bear. Um, yeah, are they, are they in danger? I don't, I don't know. Are bears endangered? I think you need a license to kill them though. It's fine to me. It didn't seem that gamey. Um, it might be a good bear. It might be a good batch. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, did you guys know that you're supposed to get a fourth COVID shot? The CDC is recommending a fourth one. Um, yeah, so that's what I got yesterday. And not going to lie, I feel like shit right now. <laughs> I feel like shit. I'm super sore and I am having a huge headache. So that's fun. Hopefully we'll get through this today. Then I can go to sleep. Um, yeah, I got the COVID shot and the flu shot yesterday. You had bear sausage? Was it good? Was it different from normal sausage? Well, let's look it up. Are bears endangered? Okay. Their status is not extinct. Thanks, Google. All right, let's go do this. All right, what was our maximum? What did we get up to? Like 83%? Let's do it. Let's beat the record. Let's go for, let's go big today. Let's go for 84%, 84. You think only polar bears are at risk. Everything else is good. Okay. Da 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 da. Liberia. Gabon or is this Gabon? Angola, Western Sahara, Rwanda should be here. Egypt, uh, Libya, Djibouti, Equatorial Guinea is here. Uh, Zambia. I don't think I ever get this right. Where is Zambia? 
Tanzania. God damn it. Botswana. Nigeria should be here. Madagascar should be here. Cameroon should be this one. And Chad. Wait, where's Chad? Here. Comoros should be this. Uganda should be... No, it can't be this. Can it? Burundi. Oof! So close. Mauritius should be here. Tunisia should be here. No! Here. Uh. Oh no. Um, Ethiopia. Kenya should be here. Okay. Central Seychelles, Somalia, Benin, Eswatini. Da -da -da -da. Gambia is here. Mali, Guinea. Senegal should be this. Niger. Wait, not bad, not bad, not bad. South Sudan, South Africa. Soto should be here. Democratic should be this one. Mm -hmm. Namibia. Oof. Oof. No! Damn it. Mozambique. No! Zimbabwe. Can it be so? Malawi. Malawi, Mauritania. Kina Faso, Togo. Algeria, Eritrea. Ghana? Are we gonna make it? Tanzania, Morocco? Sierra Leone. Sudan. There's more. Oh! 85! Guys, not bad. All right, next time. Next time we'll get 100. Not bad, not bad. It's those countries in the south that are the problem. They're so hard. All right. Oh God, I have a pounding headache. All right. Let's get through this. Okay, so what happened last week? All right, in our story. So last week, um, Yo Tanju, he gets, he, he catches this poisonous frost silkworm for Azu, right? Now, if you remember, Yo Tanju is this guy who wants to kill Xiao Feng, our hero, because Xiao Feng killed his father and his uncle, right? So, um, yeah, so uh, he, tr he actually tried to, to kill Xiao Feng, but then he, he failed, and then uh, now he was caught by Azu. And Azu covers his face, his head, with an iron mask, okay, so that Xiao Feng doesn't know who he is. Now, Azu is practicing this poisonous martial arts that requires catching a bunch of poisonous bugs, letting them bite Yo Tanju, and then draining their blood, right? That's what she's, she's doing. So they've been doing that for a bunch of bugs. And then uh, one day, they find this frost silkworm. It's like the most poisonous bug that they've ever found. And she orders him to let, let it bite him. Now he, um, he fully expects to die. So he tells her to, like, please remember me after I die. And then he lets it bite him. Um, at the moment he does that, he turns frozen because the bug is so cold. Uh, the silkworm is just so cold. He turns frozen, but then he absorbs the silkworm's energy. And then the silkworm dies. Right? So now he's, he's there. He's, he's totally frozen. And Azu, she orders her men to get rid of the body. And they throw him in, into the river. Um, <clears throat> so he's flowing down. He's uh, going down this river. He 
He thaws out and he actually lives. He's alive, right? Um, yeah, so he lives and he escapes. He practices, uh, he starts practicing the Shaolin's ten, ten, Tendon Changing Sutra unknowingly. He doesn't know what he's doing, but he's, um, whenever he does these moves, he feels better, I guess. So he's practicing this cool martial arts from Shaolin. Um, and he doesn't know this, but since he absorbed the silkworm's energy, he, he has in his body right now really strong yin energy, right? So Yo, Yo Tanjiro, he travels a bit, and he sees a fight between the Xingxiu sect and the Beggar's clan. So if you remember, the Xingxiu sect is uh, the sect that Azu is a part of, okay? So the leader of the Xingxiu sect is this guy named Ding Chunxiu. And he's looking for this divine tripod, the thing that Azu is uh, using to um, practice her martial arts. He needs that to practice his own martial arts. Um, so he's looking for this divine tripod that Azu had stolen. He needs it because if he doesn't, um, if he does, uh, this guy's martial arts requires him to absorb a lot of poisonous bugs, okay? And if he doesn't, then he dies. So he needs this divine tripod to find, like, the really poisonous bugs. Um, so he's looking for it, and he somehow gets into a fight with the Beggar's Clan. The Beggar's Clan calls forth snakes and giant pythons, because they can do that, I guess, and they capture Ding Chun Chiu. Um, and then one Beggar's Clan member tries to kill him. He does a palm strike to Ding Chun Chiu to kill him, but then he gets poisoned instead. And so this Beggar's Clan member, he dies, and then the <clears throat> other members come in to try to help him, and then they also die. Okay, so apparently anyone who touches the dead person also dies. It's a poison that spreads to whoever touches the body. Um, yeah, and that's where we left off. How's that? All right, before. So today's snack is this. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of like Twizzlers. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I bet it tastes like Twizzlers. Mm. <laughs> it's not jerky. It's just candy. Definitely Twizzlers. It's Twizzlers, but with different flavors. Mm. We've got red, green, orange, and yellow. Not bad. It's very gummy, yes. Like rainbow twizzlers? Mm hmm. True. You know? So a 6 out of 10. 5 out of 10. About 5.5 5 out of 10. <clears throat> Not that good. <clears throat> hey, Omi9999. I appreciate that. Thanks. Okay.
All right. Shall we start? It's chapter 29, part two. <laughs> Okay, the candy is still stuck in my teeth. Mm. Okay, so here is where we left off. So they, they no longer dare to touch their fallen comrades. Chang Guanqing shouted, There is poison on this old man's body. We can't touch his body. Release the projectiles. 8945 pouch disciples pulled out their hidden weapons, steel darts, flying knives, steel sleeve arrows, cobblestones. They all threw, wait, they threw all these weapons at Ding Chun Chiu. Ding Chun Chiu gave a loud shout and turned his head sharply. He swung his white hair out. His hairs were like soft whiskers and repelled ten of the projectiles thrown at him. But there, was, but there were multiple ayo cries. Multiple ayya cries. Six, seven beggars were struck by hidden projectiles. These projectiles did not hit their vital spots. Some were gazed on their flesh. But these men immediately collapsed and died. Chang Guanxing shouted, Move back! Move back! Suddenly, there was a swishing sound. It was caused by the shooting of a steel dart. Ding Chunqiu used his hairs to grip the dart and shoot it towards him. Chang Guanqing hastily used his iron flute to deflect it. There was a ringing sound, and the dart was repelled far away. He thought this old freak of Qing Xiu is really powerful. He can, he can only rely on his giant python to kill him. He brought his flute to his mouth. As he was about to blow, his lips suddenly felt numb, and he instantly became dizzy. He knew something was wrong and hastily threw away the iron flute. There was a thud sound, and he collapsed. The clan members were in shock. Immediately, two men moved forward to help him up. Chang Guanqing said drowsily, I... I am poisoned. Every... everyone, quick, quickly, and leave. The clan members were scared out of their wits. They carried him and fled, abandoning all the bodies, snakes, and cloth bags. Damn, this Ding Chin Chiu guy can use his hair. He can control his hair, I guess. Yo Tanju was still squatting in the bushes. He was so shocked by the, on, the ongoing, by the goings-on, that he dared not move an inch. The surrounding was a total silence. A dozen poisoned clan members curled into a ball like porcupines. Apparently, they had already died. The remaining giant python were no longer under the control of Chang Guanqing's flute. They would not harm anyone and only immobilized Ding Chun Chiu and his disciples. No one in the Xingxiu sect dared to move or struggle for fear of provoking the vicious nature of the snakes and getting bitten. The silence remained for a while. Finally, someone spoke. Master, your divine skill is unrivaled throughout the world. You easily slaughtered all these evil and vicious beggars and drove them away. <coughs> Remember, these disciples were the ones who were just ready to betray him, like right, like, like five minutes before. Before he could finish, another disciple interrupted him and said, Master, don't listen to his bullshit. He was the one that praised the beggars as chivalrous heroes and saints. Another disciple said, We followed Master for so many years. How can we not know his ability to split the heaven and the earth? We talked nonsense and fooled the beggars just now to distract them so that Master can display his unparalleled skills. Suddenly, someone burst into tears and wailed, Master, Master, 
Disciple deserves to die. Disciple is confused. I was afraid of death and surrendered to the enemy. I sincerely regret it now, and I am willingly die I will willingly die with the poisonous snakes. I dare not ask Master for mercy any more. The rest of the disciples immediately came to an understanding. Their master hated people who explained away and whitewashed their mistakes. Only by condemning themselves and admitting to all sorts of mistakes can they hope to receive their master's mercy and forgiveness. In an instant, all the disciples started cursing themselves. They cursed their own evil intentions and how they deserved to die. Yotanju eavesdrops, eavesdropped from the bushes. He was utterly baffled by them. Ding Chunqiu gathered his internal energy. He thought of bursting through the three giant pythons binding him by using pure force. Unfortunately, the python's body was elastic and flexible. When Ding Chunqiu exerted his strength, the, sn the snakes only lengthened. Their bodies did not break. Ding Chunqiu was covered with poison. His hair and clothes all contained deadly toxin. When the beggars attacked him with their weapons, all of them came into contact with his poison. However, the python's skin was thick, tough, and slippery. His poison could not penetrate it. As he listened to his dis disciples endlessly talking, he raged. If someone can come up with an idea to drive away the snakes, I will spare him. You lot still don't understand my temper. I will never kill people who are useful to me. You people only know how to talk nonsense and crap. What use is it? As he said this, the group of disciples immediately quieted down. After a while, someone said, We need someone to use a torch and burn the bodies of these snakes. They will definitely run off. Ding Chunxiu scolded him. You are farting. We are out here in the wilderness. There's no village or shop nearby. Who will come by? Even if someone did come by, once they see so many snakes, they will get scared off. Why would they even bother to bring a torch and burn them? The rest of the disciples kept suggesting ideas, but all the ideas were lousy and limited. Everyone just kept on talking. They hoped to curry favor with their master and show that they followed his orders and made themselves useful by suggesting ideas. After a long time, a disciple was bound so tightly that he could not breathe anymore. In his dizzy state, he randomly bit the snake. The python felt pain and retaliated by biting his throat. That disciple gave a tragic cry and died. Ding Chunqiu was getting more and more anxious. If he was surrounded by numerous enemies, he could employ devious tricks and schemes. But these snakes were completely immune to tricks and schemes. He feared that the snakes might get hungry and eventually swallow him. His fear was indeed accurate. After not being influenced by the flute sound for a long time, a giant python was extremely hungry. It opened his mouth and bit a Xingxiu disciple. The disciples cried out, Master, save me! Master, save me! His two legs had already been swallowed by the snake. His body was also swallowed. His waist entered first, and it slowly moved to his chest. As he was still not dead yet, he cried out loudly. His cry shook the wilderness. Everyone knew the same thing was about to happen to them. The sight frightened them greatly. One disciple saw the old freak of Xingxiu was also at his wit's end. His resentment rose, and he openly derided him. He blamed Ding Chunqiu for implicating him. He was originally a shepherd at the Xingxiu Sea, but was threatened and coerced into joining the Xingxiu sect. Since he was about to die, he poured out all his resentment and dissatisfaction against Ding Chunqiu. As he began cursing, the rest of the disciples also joined in. All the disciples suffered regular ill treatment under Ding Chunqiu. They held the grudge in their heart and dared not voice it out. Since everyone was about to die together, they started to scold him to vent their frustrations. One disciple was cursing loudly, and his body stirred. He, this provoked the python, and it retaliated by biting him on the shoulder. The man screamed, Ayah! Ayah! Save me! Save me! 
Yu Tanjiu saw these people were completely immobilized by the python. His heart did not have any more misgivings, and he stood up. The place was not suitable for staying, and he wanted to leave quickly. The Xingxiu disciples suddenly saw his iron mask. They had a shock, but someone remembered that he could help save them. He exclaimed, Great hero, chivalrous man, please gather some dried leaves and light a fire to drive away these snakes. I immediately give you, uh, I'll give you a thousand tails of silver. Another person said, A thousand tails is insufficient. We have to give ten thousand tails. Another person said, this gentleman is a chivalrous person. His conscience, his conscience is the best. He will definitely carry out the righteous act. Moreover, there's nothing dangerous about lighting a fire to burn the snakes. In an instant, their praises got louder and louder. The previous rewards quickly increased to one million tails of gold. The cursing ability of these disciples was first class. Their flattering and bootlicking ability was even better and well honed. Yotanju had never heard anyone call him hero, chivalrous, benevolent, and righteous, peerless hero. Under their praise, his body felt light, as if he was floating. He suddenly felt that he possessed the he suddenly felt that he possessed the spirit of great hero and chivalrous person. He did not care for the gold. He only felt regret that Azu did not hear these people immortalize him. At once he set off and started picking up dried leaves, but he saw that there were many fierce pythons. He was scared of accidentally provoking these snakes and getting trapped by them. After thinking for a while, he gathered dried twigs and made a huge fire in front of him. He picked up one burning twig and threw it at the nearest python. He, he hid behind the fire, his body poised. If the snake rushed towards him, he would immediately run and escape. Whatever a great hero or chivalrous person, he didn't care about it anymore. The python were indeed afraid of fire. Once it saw the fire burning, it released the Xingxiu people and slithered into the bushes. Yu Tanju saw his initial attempt was successful. Along with the cheering of the Xingxiu disciples, he lit several more twigs and threw them at the python. All the snakes started to flee. Even the giant pythons couldn't withstand the fire. It released its captives and slithered away. Moments later, hundreds of snakes and giant pythons all fled the scene. Not a single one remained. Oh, so he saved them. The Xingxiu disciples celebrated and cheered loudly. Master is extremely wise. Master has great foresight. The fire method is indeed the most effective. Oh, now they're back to, back to brown nosing. Master has great fortune. He turns ill luck into good. It's all due to Master's graceful manner. He directed with perfect ease. He saved our insignificant lives. They kept praising and piling credits on Ding Chun Chu. They did not mention Yotanju's effort in freeing them. Yotanju stood rooted to the ground. He felt strange. He pondered, Just a few moments ago, you people cursed your master, but now you praised him to the heavens, and now you've completely forgotten about me. What happened to the great hero and chivalrous person? Ding Chunchu waved his hand to beckon him over and said, Iron-headed guy, come over here. What's your name? Yotanju was used to being humiliated, even though Ding Chunchu was quite rude. He did not care and replied, My name is Yo Tanju. And he walked a few steps towards him. Ding Chun Chu said, Are those beggars dead? Go check to see if they are still breathing. Yo Tanju said, Okay. He bent over his body and stretched out his hand to check the breath of a beggar. He didn't feel any breath. The person was long dead. He tried another beggar. His breath also stopped long ago. He said, All of them are dead. They are not breathing. He saw the expressions of the Xingxiu disciples were strange. They seemed to be gloating at his misfortune. He did not understand the reason behind it. He repeated his words, All of them are dead. They are not breathing. After a while, the smug look on their faces slowly died off, replaced by expressions of shock and disbelief. Ding Chunxiu said, Go examine every single beggar. See if any one of them can be saved. Yu Tanju said, Okay. 
He examined all the beggars. He shook his head and said, All of them are dead. Elders' skill is indeed formidable. Ding Chunchu smiled sarcastically and said, Your poison resisting skill is also formidable. Yu Tanju felt curious and said, My what? Poison resisting skill? He was very puzzled. He did not understand the meaning of Ding Chun Chu's word. He did not realize that when he checked the beggar for breath, it was the same as going to the gates of hell. When Ding Chun Chu was immobilized by the python, he could not escape and had to be rescued by Yo Tan Zhu. If news of this spread out, he would definitely lose face. Thus, when the snakes left, he immediately thought of silencing Yo Tan Zhu. Unexpectedly, for the past few months, Yo Tan Zhu kept on practicing the Tending Changing Sutra. The poison of the frost silkworm had also merged flawlessly within his body. Thus, the poison on the beggars could not harm him at all. Ding Chun Chu pondered. Looking at his skin and listening to his voice, he is extremely young. He definitely won't have any real skill or ability. Mostly, probably, his, he's carrying anti-poison pearls or some other treasures that repel poison. Or he had previously consumed some mirac miracle antidote. He said, Brother Yo, come over here, I have something to say. Yo Tan Chu saw his speech was sincere, but he personally witnessed how he viciously killed all the beggars. His disciples also cursed and flattered randomly. He felt that these people were extremely difficult to deal with, and it was best to stay far away from them. He said, Junior has something to do. I can't stay. I have to go now. He cupped his fists and walked away. He only walked a few steps. A light breeze swept past his body. Both his wrists were caught by someone. Yo Tanju raised his head. He saw the person was a large man from the Xingxiu sect. He did not know his intentions, but saw him laugh grimly. He knew he was in trouble and cried, Let me go! And he gave a tug. There was a whooshing sound over his head. A large body flew over his head. With a loud bang, the body slammed onto the opposite cliff. The skull was crushed immediately. The brain and skull mixed into a slurry. Yo Tanju saw the person slam the cliff with an extremely violent force. He found it hard to believe. He was even more astounded that the person was the one holding his wrist moments ago. He was puzzled. This man was perfectly fine. Why did he bang his head on the cliff and commit suicide? Is he mad? He never suspected that when he gave a tug, his fierce strength threw the large man out onto the cliff. Oh, he's super powerful now. From practicing the Tendon Changing Sutra. The group of Xingxiu disciples gave a ah sound. Their faces changed color. Ding Chunxiu saw the way Yo Tanju threw his disciple. It was flimsy, not first class skill, but the physical strength is, was highly unusual. He thought Yo Tanju must be gifted with innate superhuman strength, but his martial arts was mediocre. His body flashed, and he extended his hand to push down on Yo Tanju's head. Yo Tanju was caught off guard. He was forced to kneel on the ground. He tried to straighten, straighten his body to stand up, but he felt as if a 10,000-pound stone mountain was sitting on his head. He could not move at all. He pleaded, Elder, please, spare my life. Ding Chun Chu heard him plead for mercy. He felt assured and asked, Who is your teacher? You are really bold. How dare you kill my disciple? Yo Tanju said, I, I have no master. I dare not kill elders' disciple. Ding Chun Chu did not want to waste time talking to him. It would be easier to simply kill him. He released his hand to let Yo Tan Chu stand up. Immediately, he waved his palm and, stru and struck towards Yo Tan Chu's chest. Yo Tan Chu had a huge shock, and he hastily extended his right hand to deflect the palm. Ding Chun Chu's palm was slow. Yo Tan Chu extended his right hand, and both their palms met. Ding Chun Chu wanted their palms to meet. He gathered his internal energy and sent it out together with the poison in his hand. This was his famous great energy dissolving skill. The victim would either contract deadly poison or sustain damage to his meridians and become incapable of exerting internal energy. 
The victim would feel as if all his energy was dissolved. The outcome was completely controlled by Ding Chun Chu. Ding Chun Chu killed countless people with this skill. When martial artists hear the word great energy dissolving skill, they would feel great loathing and fear. Both their palms clashed. Yu Tanju's body shook and he retreated seven, six to seven steps. He tried to stand his ground but was forced to sit down. But the opponent's force did not dissipate. His arm hit the ground and his back also followed. His head also hit the ground and he somersaulted three times. He finally managed to stabilize himself and he kowtowed and said, Elder, please spare my life. When Ding Chun Chu clashed palms with him, he felt his internal energy was extremely strong. The energy possessed a strange coldness, which also contained deadly poison. Although Yo Tanju fell down pathetically, but the poison palm from Ding Chun Chu couldn't harm his opponents, his meridians. He couldn't stop him from exerting internal energy. In terms of internal energy and poison, Yo Tanju was not at a disadvantage. Why the need to beg for mercy? Could it be that he deliberately ridiculed him? He walked a few steps towards Yo Tanju and asked, you are asking me to spare your life. Is it the truth, or are you faking it? Yo Tanju kowtowed and said, Junior is sincere. I beg Elder to spare my life. Ding Chun Chu pondered, I don't know what strange encounter this man met. He accumulated more poison than me. He is a rare treasure. I need to recruit this man to find out how he practiced his skills and then absorb all the poison from his body, and then kill him. Wouldn't it be a waste if I just kill him like this? He pressed his palm on Yotan Ju's iron head, channeled his internal energy, and said, Unless you accept me as your master, else why should I spare your life? Yotan Ju felt as if his head was being roasted. His face felt extremely hot. He was very scared. After being tortured by Azu, he had long resigned himself to adversity. Whatever good or evil, unyielding integrity, he forgot all about them. He only hoped to preserve his life. He quickly said, Master, Yo Tanju is willing to be your disciple. I beg, Master, to accept me. Ding Chun Chu was overjoyed and said, You want me to be your master? Why not? But our sect has many rules and regulations. Can you abide all of them? Do you ho? Do you wholeheartedly accept my orders and never dare to defy? Yo Tanju said, Disciple is willing to abide by the rules and follow master. Ding Chun Chu said, If I want to take your life, you are willing to give it up? Yo Tanju said, This, this, think it through properly. If you are willing to just say you are willing, if you are willing, if you are willing, just say you are willing. If you are not, just say so. Yo Tanju pondered. You want to take my life? Of course I am not willing. If it really reaches such a state, then I will simply escape. If I fail to escape, then even if I am not willing, there's nothing I can do about it. He replied. Dis Disciple is willing to die for master. Ding Chun Shu laughed and said, Very good, very good. Tell me all about your life experiences. Yo Tanju did not wish to talk about his life experiences or re recent misfortune. He said he was a farm boy. He was captured by the Liao during their raid, and they put an iron mask on his head. Ding Chun Chu inquired about the strange poison in his body. Yo Tanju only revealed how he met the frost silkworm and monk Hui Jing. How he stole the frost silkworm. He lied that he was accidentally bitten by the silkworm. Thus, his body was frozen solid and the silkworm just died. He did not mention about Azu or how she used him to train her poison palm. Ding Chun Chu pressed for more details about the appearance and shape of the frost silkworm. His face revealed envy and admiration. Yo Tanju pondered, If I talk about the book with strange drawings, he would definitely snatch it and not return it. Ding Chun Chu asked him about this, his strange martial arts, but he did not reveal the truth. Ding Chun Chu did not know about the martial arts of the Tendon Changing Sutra. He saw Yo Tan Chu's martial arts was only mediocre, but his yin frost internal energy 
is purely due to the miraculous effect of the frost silkworm. He cursed in his heart. This divine silkworm? To think it was absorbed by some strange coincidence. It's really a pity. After thinking for a while, he asked, The monk who captured this frost silkworm, he is from the Minjong Temple in Nanjing. Yu Tanju said, Yes. This Hui Jing monk said the frost silkworm originated from the summit of the Kunlun Mountains. Very good. Since one frost silkworm came from there, there must be two or three more. But Kunlun Mountains' radius is a few thousand li. Without an experienced guide to point the way, it would be difficult to catch the, the frost silkworm. He personally experienced the divine effect of the frost silkworm. He felt it was even more valuable than the divine wood king, wooden king tripod. The prime task is to first capture the monk Hui Jing and ask him to lead the way to the Kunlun Mountains to capture the silkworm. Monk Hui Jing was from Shaolin. Originally, it was a messy affair to mess with him, but luckily he's, he was currently based in Nanjing, and this made it easier to capture him. At once, he ordered Yo Tanju to perform the rites and formally take him in as a disciple. The rest of the disciples saw their master especially attentive towards Yo Tanju. Naturally, they heaped tons of praises and tried to get into his good books. These bunch of disciples had openly cursed their master and surrendered to the enemy. Ding Chunchu still had uses for them, and thus he pretended to forget about their betrayal. Moreover, he had foresaw their betrayal, and he was not too angry about it. The group traveled northeast. Yo Tanju followed behind Ding Chunchu. He saw his sleeves. He saw his sleeves flut fluttering in the wind. His footsteps light. He looked like a god. He felt his admiration rising. I have such an incredible master. It's really due to the good fortune accumulated by my previous life. They traveled for three days. On this afternoon, the group rested, rested, and quenched their thirst at a pavilion. Suddenly, they heard the sound of horses. Four people came riding on horses. The four of them rode their horses near the pavilion. The person on the lead horse shouted, Elder brother, second brother, there's, a water. there's water in the pavilion. Let's drink a few bowls and let the horses regain their stamina. He dismounted from the horse and walked into the pavilion. The other three also dismounted. The four of them saw Ding Chunchu and his group of disciples. They nodded their heads to show courtesy and walked to the vat of water. They used the clay bowl and scooped the water. Yo Tanju saw the first person was dressed in black. His figure thin and small, he had a mustache, and he looked agile and brave. The second person was dressed in yellow robe. His figure was, th was thin, but his stature tall. Both his eyebrows slanted downwards. He looked sickly and had a vicious expression. The third person was dressed in red. His, figures his figure tall and sturdy, his ears big. He had a thick white beard. He looked like a rich merchant. The last person was dressed in green scholar robes. He looked around 50 years of age. His eyes were narrow, perhaps due to studying too much. He did not scoop the water, but drank from his own wine gourd. At this moment, a monk came walking in with big strides on the road. He stopped outside the pavilion, joined both his hands together, and respectfully said, Benefactor, Junior monk is thirsty. I wish to rest in the pavilion and drink a bowl of water. The black robe person smiled and said, Master, don't need to be so courteous. We are all passers-by. This pavilion is not built by us. Come in and drink some water. The monk replied, Oh, me, Tuofo. Thank you very much. He entered the pavilion. Don, thank you so much. I appreciate it. The Frost Silkworm would be an awesome band name. Frost Silkworm? Hell yeah. The monk was around 25 years of age, dense eyebrows and big eyes, a big sinking flat nose. His appearance was rather ugly. His monk's robes had numerous cloth patches and was extremely clean. He waited for the three men to finish drinking before approaching the water vat. He scooped a bowl of water. 
pressed both his hands together and lowered his head. He respectfully said, When Buddha gazes upon a bowl of water, he sees 84,000 bugs. If I don't chant this mantra, I will be breaking my oath of abstinence from meat. He chanted the mantra, Yang Fu Shi Bo Luo Mo Ni Sha He. After he finished chanting, he drank the water. The black robe man felt curious when he saw it. He asked, Little master, why are you chanting? The monk said, Junior monk is chanting the mantra for drinking water. When Buddha gazes upon a bowl of water, he sees 84,000 bugs. Monks are forbidden to kill. Thus, I have to chant this mantra before drinking the water. The black robe man laughed and said, Little master, you really like to joke. This water is very clean. There is no bug. Benefactor, you don't understand. With our mortal eyes, you can't see any bugs in the water. But with the divine eye of Buddha, you can see thousands of bugs in the water. The black robe man laughed. After chanting the mantra, you drink all the 84,000 bugs into your stomach. The bugs wouldn't... Wait. The bugs won't die anymore? The monk hesitated and said, This... This... My master didn't teach me. Most probably, they won't die. True. Yeah, if you don't want to kill all the bugs, then... Why are you drinking the water? The yellow robe man interrupted and said, Not true, not true. The bug still has to die, but when Little Master chanted the mantra, the 84,000 bugs will all go to heaven. Little Master drinks a bowl of water and helps 84,000 souls find peace. Great achievement, great achievement. The monk did not know whether his words were true or false. Both his hands held on to the bowl of water. He stared blankly and muttered, Drink a bowl of water and help 84,000 souls find peace? I don't have such great powers. The yellow robed man stood beside the monk and took the bowl from his hand. He inspected the bowl and counted, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand. Not true, not true. Little master, the bowl has eighty-three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine bugs. You counted one extra. The monk said, Namo Amutofu. Benefactor, you must be joking. You are immortal. How can you possess the divine eye? The yellow robed man said, So you have divine eyes? The monk said, I don't have it. The yellow robed man replied, Not true, not true. I think you have divine eyes. Or else, how would you know I am a mortal and not a bodhisattva? The monk looked at him to the left and right, his expression utterly perplexed. The big red robed man walked over, took the clay bowl and returned it to the monk, laughing. <laughs> Master, please drink the water. This brother of mine is only pulling your leg. Don't take it seriously. The monk accepted the bowl and said respectfully, Many thanks, many thanks. But his heart felt uncertain, and he did not drink the water. The big man said, I saw little master footstep is sturdy. You possess martial arts. How should I address you? Where did you become a monk? The monk put the bowl on top of the cover of the water vat. He bowed and said, Junior monk is Xu Zhu. I am from the Shaolin Temple. The black-robed man shouted, Terrific! Terrific! So you turn out to be an expert from Shaolin. Come, come, come. You and I will spar. Xu Zhu waved his hand repeatedly and said, Junior monk's martial arts is lowly. How would I dare to fight with sir? The black-robed man said, I didn't get into fights for many days. My hands are itchy. We are only sparring. It is not a real fight. Why are you so scared? Xu Zhu retreated two steps and said, Although junior monk practiced martial arts for a few years, but it was purely for strengthening my body, I really can't fight. The black-robed man said, All the monks from Shaolin are experts in martial artists. Wait, or experts martial artists. Monks who just started learning martial arts are forbidden to leave the temple. Since little master is able to leave the temple, then you must be a top expert. Come, come. We will only spar for a hundred moves. It doesn't matter who wins or loses. Xu Zhu retreated another two steps and said, Benefactor, you don't understand. Junior monk is able to leave the temple, 
not because of my martial arts, but because the temple currently lacks people to deliver letters. Junior monk is forced to help out in delivering the letters. Junior monk is to de deliver ten heroes' invitation cards. My master ordered me to return immediately once they have been delivered. I am forbidden to fight. I had delivered four of the cards. I still have six cards with me. Benefactor, your martial arts is superb. Please accept this invitation card. He retrieved an oil cloth bag from within his bosom. He opened the bag and took out a big red card. He respectfully presented it and said, May I ask for your name so that I can account for it when I return back to my master? <clears throat> the black robed man did not take the card. He said, You did not fight with me. How you know I am a hero or a coward? Let's spar for a few moves. I will accept this card after I beat you. He took two steps forward. His left fist made a false move. His right fist swung towards Suju. <clears throat> As the fist was about to reach Suju, he immediately held it back and shouted, Quick, retaliate! The burly red-robed man heard Suju mention about the hero's invitation card. His interest was piqued, and he said, Fourth younger brother, there's no hurry to compete. Let's take a look at what is on the invitation card. He took the card from Shuju and saw the words written, Shaolin Temples is abbot, Xuan Tzu, Xuan, Xuan Tzu, <laughs> respectfully invites heroes from all over the world to gather on the ninth day of the ninth lunar month, the Chongyang Festival at Songshan Shaolin Temple, to challenge the reputation of Gu Mu Rongzi's returning you with your own move. The burly man gave a ah cry. He gave the card to the, to the scholar beside him and said to Suju, So, Shaolin is holding this hero's meet to challenge Gusu Murong family. The black-robed man shouted, Excellent, excellent. I am called Gust of Wind, Feng Bo -e. I am the subordinate of the Gusu Murong family. You don't need any hero's meet. I will personally ask for advice from the Shaolin expert now. <clears throat> Shuju retreated another two steps. Okay, so this Feng Bo guy, he, he, this Feng Bo guy, he loves to fight. So that's why he's challenging this guy. Shuju retreated another two steps. His left foot was outside the pavilion. He said, So you are benefactor of Feng. My master told me the Shaolin Temple is requesting Mr. Mu Rong's esteemed presence at the temple. But we dare not offend him. It's only that rumors had been spreading around and many people have died in recent years under the Gusu Murongs' divine skill in returning you with your own move. My martial grandfather, Master Xuan Bei, died in Dali. We don't know if it's related to the Murong family, except for our abbot. Everyone had suspicion in their heart. Thus he... Okay, so the Shaolin Temple suspects that the, the Murong family um, had killed the Master Xuan Bei. <coughs> so that's why they're inviting people to come, especially the Murong family. The black robed man interrupted and said, this matter is not related to our Gusu Murong family, but you will most probably not believe me, even if I tell you. Since we can't fully explain the ongoings of this matter, we will settle through martial arts. Let's do it this way. Both of us will spar right now. It's like drumming up support and setting the stage for the main show. On the Chongyang Festival, I will then visit the Shaolin Temple and fight every single challenger. Joyful, joyful, but after going through 17 or 18 challengers, I will most probably be heavily injured and immobile and won't have the chance to fight with your abbot, Xuan Chi. Sigh, sigh. Huh, I don't have the fate. Pity, pity. As he finished, he rubbed his fists to get ready for the fight. The burly man said, Fourth younger brother, hold on. We will clarify first. It's not too late to fight afterwards. The yellow-robed man said, Not true, not true. If we clarify the matter, then there's no need to fight. Fourth younger brother, this is a good opportunity. If you want to fight, you cannot clarify the matter. 
The tall and sturdy man ignored both his brothers and said to Su Zhu, I am Gong Bai Chuan. The person over there is my second younger brother, Gong Yu Gang. As he finished, he pointed, he pointed at the scholar. Then he pointed at the yellow robed man and said, This is my third younger brother, Bao Bu Tong. We are all followers of young master Mu Rong. Su Zhu paid tribute to all four men. He said, Benefactor Gong, Benefactor Gong. Bao Bu Tong interrupted, Not true, not true. My second brother's surname is Gong Yu. You call him Benefactor Gong. That is wrong. Su Zhu quickly said, Pardon me, pardon me. Junior monk is poorly educated. Benefactor Gong Yu, please don't be offended. Benefactor Bao. Bao Bu Tong interrupted again. Wrong again. Although my surname is Bao, but I have never given alms to monks or nuns in my entire life. Thus you cannot address me as benefactor. Xu Zhu said, uh, Yes, yes, a third senior Bao, fourth master Feng. Bao Bu Tong said, Wrong again. My younger brother Feng will fight with you later, no matter who wins or, lo <clears throat> no matter who wins or loses. You will gain some experience. Your martial arts will definitely have some progress. Isn't he making a donation to you? Xu Zhu said, uh, Yes, yes, benefactor Feng, junior monk really cannot fight. Monks should focus primar primarily on cultivating inner self. Martial arts is secondary. It doesn't matter if my martial arts is lousy. Feng Bo -e sighed. You don't take martial arts seriously. Your skill is most likely ordinary. There is no need to fight anymore. As he finished this, he shook, he shook his head repeatedly. His enthusiasm dulled. Xu Zhu breathed a sigh of relief, his expression joyful, and said, Yes, yes. <clears throat> Deng Bai Chuan said, Master Xu Zhu, this invitation card, I will accept it on behalf of my young master. My young master should have visited your temple a few months ago. Could it be that he never came? Xu Zhu replied, He didn't visit. The abbot longed for his arrival, but he didn't come. Twice we sent our people to visit your residence, but we only heard that senior elder Mu Rong had died, and your young master had left the residence. This time the abbot requested the head monk of Damo Hall to visit your residence in Suzhou to deliver the invitation card. He's afraid that your young master is still not at home, and he could only try to widely circulate the invitation card within the martial arts fraternity. I hope you can explain this indiscretion to your young master. When benefactor Mu Rong visits our temple next year, our abbot will personally offer his apology. Deng Bai Chuan said, Little master, don't, be, don't need to be so polite. The appointed date is still a long time away. My young master will definitely visit the Shaolin Temple at the appointed date and pay his respects to the abbot. Xu Zhu joined his hands together and bowed. He said, Our abbot greatly welcomes young master Mu Rong and all of you to visit the Shaolin Temple. Feng Bo'e saw Su Zhu was outdated and overly formal. He didn't have the least bit of passionate, straightforward behavior of martial artists. Although he may be a monk, but he didn't look like a world-renowned Shaolin monk. He could not tolerate him and ignored him. He turned and looked at Ding Chun Xiu and his group of disciples. The Xing Xiu disciples all carried weapons. Obviously, they were martial artists. Feng Bo'e should be able to select a few and fight with them. When Yu Tanju saw Feng Bo'e and the rest enter the pavilion, he immediately hid behind his master. Ding Chun Chiu was tall and large and was able to hide him. Deng Bai Chuan and the rest did not see his weird iron head. Feng Bo'e saw Ding Chun Chiu was healthy in old age. He had an immortal aura about him and looked like a top master. Feng Bo'e felt his admiration rising, but he still stepped ahead and challenged. May I know the name of this elder? Ding Chun Chiu smiled and said, My surname is Ding. At this moment, Su Zhu suddenly gave an ah sound. He shouted, Marshal Grandfather, wait, Marshal Grandfather, you are here. Feng Bo'e turned his head. He saw seven or eight monks traveling on the road. Leading the group was two elder monks. 
Two monks at the rear carried a stretcher, and someone was lying on it. Shu Zhu quickly stepped out of the pavilion and paid his respects to the two elder monks. He also reported about Deng Bai Chuan and his group. The monk on the right nodded his head. He entered the pavilion and said to Deng Bai Chuan, This old monk is Xuan Nun. He pointed to another elder monk and said, This is my junior martial brother, Xuan Tong. It's, unfortunate. it's fortunate that we get to meet four great virtuous people from the Gu Su Mu Rong family. Deng Bai Chuan and the rest had long heard of Xuan Nan's reputation. His face was full of wrinkles, his gaze deep and clear. They quickly paid their respects. Feng Bo said, Great Master is head monk of the Shaolin Damo Hall. I have long heard of your divine skills. I wish to ask for some advice. Xuan Nan gave a slight smile and said, This old monk and junior Xuan Tong received the orders of our abbot to travel to Jian Nan's ba basin of swallows, the residence of the Mu Rong family, to deliver this invitation card. This is the third time our temple has sent someone to the basin of swallows. But, unexpectedly, we met here by chance. Our fate is really deep. As he finished this, he took out a red invitation card from his bosom. Deng Bai Chuan accepted the card with both hands. He saw the words on the card, respectfully inviting benefactor Mu Rong from the Gusu Basin of Swallows. He knew the contents must be similar to the card delivered by Xu Zhu. He said, Both of you are eminent monks of the Shaolin Temple. You enjoy great reputation in the martial arts fraternity. It's a great honor for our Mu Rong family to have you personally deliver the card. We have already gotten the invitation card from that little master. We should have responded quickly. On the Chongyang Festival, my young master, Mu Rong, will definitely pay his respects at the Shaolin Temple. He will personally press his, express his thanks to all eminent monks of the Shaolin Temple and clarify the mis, all misunderstandings. Xuan Nan pondered. You said to clarify all misunderstandings. Could it be that senior martial brother Xuan Bei was not killed by your Mu Rong family? Suddenly, he heard someone shout behind him. Ah, master, it's him! Xuan Nan turned his head. He saw a weird-looking man point his fingers at the stretcher. The man whispered something to the white-haired old man. Yo Tanju whispered to Ding Chun Chiu, The fat monk on the stretcher. He is the one who captured the frost silkworm but I don't know how he ended up being stretchered away by Shaolin. Ding Chunxiu heard this fat monk was the original owner of the frost silkworm. He was overjoyed and whispered, You didn't mistake him for someone else? Yu Tanju said, No, he, he is called Hui Jing. Master, look, his body is fat and his belly round. Ding Chunxiu saw Hui Jing's belly was even larger than pregnant women. With such a large belly, no one would ever forget once they see it. They won't mistake him for someone else. Ding Chunxiu said to Xuan Nan, Great master, I am a friend of this monk Hui Jing. Is he sick? Xuan Nan pressed both his hands together and said, May I ask the name of benefactor? How did you know my martial nephew? Peepzilla, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Okay, so, so that monk Hui Jing is uh, on a stretcher. Okay, so it looks like he was hurt for some reason. He was the one who um, was the owner of that, uh, the frost silkworm. Oh, wait. All right. You know what time it is? Time for a break. All right, five minute break. I'll be right back. All right, we back. Okay, there were a bunch of people, okay? A lot of people in that scene. So, but there are three main groups meeting, right? We have the Mu Rong family meeting. We have the some monks from the Shaolin Temple. And we have um, the Xing Xiu sect. All in this pavilion.
Ning Chunchu pondered. This Hui Jing is with a group of Shaolin monks. This is very troublesome. Luckily, we met him here. We can kidnap or seize him. Much easier than trying to infiltrate Shaolin to capture him. As he thought about the miraculous effect of the frost silkworm, he felt his chest felt hot. He said, I am Ding Chun Chiu. As he said the word Ding Chun Chiu, Xuan Nen, Xuan Tong, Deng Bai Chuan, Gong Yu Gang, Ba Bu Tong, Feng Bo Wu, all six of them simultaneously gave an ah sound. Their expression became grave. The evil reputation of the frost, oh, frost? The evil reputation of the old freak of Xing Xiu was renowned throughout the world. They did not respect him. God damn it. They did not expect him to be a person with such graceful manner and elegance. Even more unexpected was to be able to meet him at this pavilion. The six of them immediately became alert to guard against him. <coughs> Xuan Nan calmed down in an instant. He said, So, it's Mr. Ding from the Xingxiu Si. I have long heard of your name. It's really well known. He did not say it's fortunate to meet you or other, or other pleasantries. Xuan Nan thought, whoever meets you, it's really their great misfortune. Ding Chun Xiu said, I wouldn't dare. Head monk of the Shaolin Damo Hall, shifting heaven and earth within the sleeves, renowned all over the world, truly well known and respected. This monk Hui Jing, I am looking all over for him, to think that we can meet here. Excellent, excellent. Xuan Nan's eyebrows slightly narrowed. He said, It's unfortunate Marshal Nephew Hui Jing did not obey the teachings of the Shaolin Temple. He broke excessive rules. A year ago, he left the temple without permission and committed numerous evils. The abbot dispatched several people to look for him. After much effort, they finally found him, and now we are bringing him back to the temple. Mr. Ding, you have met him before. Ding Chun Chiu said, So he is not sick. He was injured by you people. Is he... Is the injuries serious? Xuan Nan did not reply immediately. After a while, he said, He refused to accept the orders of the abbot. He even injured others. Xuan Nan pondered, If he associated with evil demons like you, he broke another great commandment. Ding Chun Chiu said, I was at the Kunlun Mountains. I spent a lot of effort before capturing a frost silkworm. It's an extremely important object but it got stolen by Monk Hui Jing. I traveled from the Xingxiu Sea to the Central Plains just to retrieve the frost silkworm. He did not finish his words as Hui Jing shouted, Where is my frost silkworm? You seen my frost silkworm? I found the silkworm after much painstaking effort at Kunlun Mountains. You, you, you stole it. Are oh, you still alive? <clears throat> Ever since Yo Tanju revealed himself by shouting out, Feng Bo -e kept looking and examining his iron mask. He did not bother about the conversation between Xuan Nan, Ding Chun Chiu, and Hui Jing. He walked a few rounds around Yo Tanju. He saw the iron mask was very well made. It could not be removed from his head. He wanted to stretch out his hands to knock on the mask. After examining a while, he said, Hello, friend. How are you? Yo Tanju replied, I, I'm fine. He saw Feng Bo -e was very energetic, jumping and moving around. He was scared. Feng Bo -e said, Friend, this iron mask, how did you put it on? I have traveled all over the world, but I have never seen such a face mask before. Yo Tanju felt ashamed. He lowered his head and said, This, my, this was not under my control. I did not put it on myself. Feng Bo -e listened to his pitiful plight. He was angered. Who played this kind of trick on you? I will personally pay him a visit. He stared at Ding Chun Chiu, thinking that it must be the doings of the old man. Yo Tan Chiu quickly said, No, no, it's not my master. You are a proper man. What's the big idea in putting on this iron mask? Come, I'll remove it for you. He retrieved a dagger from his boots. The blade glimmered brightly. Obviously, it was extremely sharp. He was about to use it to remove the mask. 
Yo Tanjiro knew the mask was stuck onto his face and the back of his head. It was interlinked with his flesh and blood. Oh, shit. Oh, you can't take it off. Because you would take his whole face off. Oh, God. Oh, have you guys seen that movie? Long time ago. Called Face Off. Uh, so good. So, yeah, this is the same, same kind of thing. If you take off the mask, you would take off his face. Oh, no. His life would be in great danger if it was forcibly removed. He quickly said, No, no, you cannot remove it. Feng Bo said, Don't be scared. This dagger of mine can cut through iron as if it was made of mud. I won't harm your skin and flesh even when, uh, when I remove the mask. Yo Tan Jiu shouted, No, you cannot do it. You are scared of the person who put this mask on you, correct? When you see him next, just say that Mr. Feng forcibly removed it and it's beyond your control. Ask the evil person to come find me. As he, as he finished speaking, he held onto Yo Tan Jiu's left wrist. Uh, yeah, Bigfoot. Uh, face off with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. That was such a good movie. Yotanju saw the dagger flash brightly. He was extremely shocked and shouted, Master! Master! He turned his head to seek help from Ding Chun Chu. Ding Chun Chu was standing beside the stretcher. His attention focused solely on Hui Jing. He did not hear his pleas for help. Feng Bo'e raised his dagger. He shaved the iron mask with it. Yotanju panicked and waved his right palm. He wanted to push him away. It was a pai sound. He hit Feng Bo'e right in the middle of his left shoulder. Feng Bo was preoccupied with shaving the iron mask. He feared he might slip and injure Yo Tan Ju's face. He did not guard against the palm. The strength in the palm was exceptional. Feng Bo groaned and fell down. He used his left hand to push off the ground and got back up. With a wa sound, he vomited a mouthful of fresh blood. Deng Bai Chuan, Gong Yu Gang, Bao Butong, the three of them, saw Yo Tan Ju's sneak attack. Their fourth younger brother had a huge disadvantage. They were extremely shocked. When they saw Fang Bo Er's deathly pale face, they became even more worried. Gong Yu Gang took his pulse. The pulse was rapid and irregular. There seems to be a faint trace of poisoning. He pointed at Yo Tan Ju and cursed. Good kid, top disciple of the old freak of Xing Xiu. Requite kindness with ingratitude. You use such vicious methods to injure people. He took out a small bottle from his bosom, removed the bottle cap, and took out a detoxification pill. He fed it to Feng Bo Er. Deng Bai Chuan and Bao Bu Tong's body flashed. They blocked Yo Tan Ju and Ding Chun Chiu. <clears throat> Bao Bu Tong secretly gathered internal energy in his left hand. His fingers formed a claw. He was about to grab Yo Tan Ju's chest. Deng Bai Chuan said, Third younger brother, stay your hand. Bao Bu Tong did not attack. His eyes shifted towards his elder brother. Deng Bai Chuan said, Our Gusu Murong family has no feud with the Sing Xiu sect. Our fourth younger brother has good intentions in removing the iron mask. Why did your sect injure him? I want to seek Mr. Ding for clarification. Ding Chun Xiu saw his new disciple only needed one palm stroke to injure a good fighter from the Gusu Murong family. Xing Xiu's sect thus commanded all inspiring authority. He was secretly pleased and, and admired the miraculous effect of the frost silkworm even more. He smiled and said, Master Feng is brave and relentless but he also likes to poke his nose into other people's business. This disciple of mine likes to wear an iron mask. How did, you, how did it obstruct your Gusu Murong family? Gong Yugan had supported Feng Bo'e into sitting position, but his whole body was shivering, his teeth chattering and grinding. It was as if he was in a freezer. Oh shit. His palm strike also makes you cold. After a while, his lips turned pur purple. His face also gradually turned from white to green. Gong Yu Gan's detoxification pill had miraculous effects, but after being consumed by Feng Bo'e, it seemed to vanish without a trace and had absolutely no effect at all. 
Gong Yugan was desperate. He placed his hands near Feng Buwe to check his breathing. Suddenly, a burst of cold air entered his palm. The chill penetrated into his bones. Gong Yugan quickly withdrew his hands and said, Not good. Uh, why is the cold so powerful? Even the air exhaled by Feng Buwe was so cold, the frost poison in him must be very serious. The situation was very dangerous. There was no time to debate who was right or wrong. He turned around and said to Ding Chunchu, My younger brother is poisoned by your disciple. Please give us the antidote. The poison contracted by Feng Buwe was the deadly poison of the frost silkworm, forced out by the internal energy of Yo Tan Jiu's tendon changing sutra. Not to mention that Ding Chunchu did not have the antidote for it. Even if he did have it, why would he surrender it? Ding Chunchu raised his head and laughed towards the heaven and shouted, Ah Wu Liu Lu Gong, Ah Wu Liu Lu Gong. What? And flicked his sleeves, generating a burst of wind. Suddenly, the Xing Xiu disciples all rushed out of the pavilion and quickly ran away. Deng Bai Chan and the rest of the Shaolin monks felt this gust of wind irritated their eyes. It was really hard to bear, and their tears rolled down endlessly. They could not open their eyes. They secretly cursed. Not good! Damn, this guy can... Uh, this guy has tear gas. They knew Ding Chun Chiu's sleeve contained poison powder. With this flick of the sleeves, all the poison got scattered. Deng Bai Chuan, Gong Yugang, Bao Bu Tong, all three of them blocked in front of Feng Bo -e. They were afraid the enemy might harm him. Xuan Nan shut his eyes and pushed out with his palm. It happened to hit the pillar of the pavilion. The pillar snapped immediately, and half the pavilion collapsed and came crashing down. Roof tiles and mud rained down. Everyone struggled to open their eyes. Ding Chun Chu and Yo Tan Jiu had disappeared. A few Shaolin monks shouted, Where is Hui Jing? Where is Hui Jing? It seemed, during the confusion, Hui Jing was abducted by Ding Chun Chu. Nice. The empty stretcher covered the head of one Shaolin monk. Xuan Tong was furious. Give chase! And he rushed out of the pavilion. Deng Bai Chuan and Bao Bu Tong followed him and gave chase as well. Xuan Nan waved his left hand and led the rest of the Shaolin monks to follow and provide assistance. Gong Yugan was taking care of Feng Bo'e, both, both of them resting at the other, intact half of the pavilion. Gong Yugan felt stinging pain in his eye. Tears kept on flowing. He saw cold sweat seeping through Feng Bo'e's forehead. After a while, it became frost. As he was getting scared and anxious, he heard the sound of footsteps. Gong Yugan raised his head. He saw Deng Bai Chuan supporting Bao Bu Tong. They walked quickly. Gong Yugan had a huge shock. He said, Big brother, third brother is injured? Deng Bai Chuan said, He got poisoned by that iron head man. After a while, Xuan Nan and the rest of the monks also returned to the, to the pavilion. Xuan Tong was leaning on Xu Zhu's back. His teeth was making chattering sounds. Xuan Nan, Deng Bai Chuan, and Gong Yugan looked at each other in fear. They were at a loss as to what to do. Wait, so Yo, uh, Yo Tanju, Yo Tanju uh, hit three people with his palm strike, right? It seemed, with his poison palm. So th these three people are all from... are all poisoned and freezing. Deng Bai Chuan said, That iron-headed man and third younger brothers clashed palms. After that, he also clashed palm with Master Xuan Tong. We didn't expect, didn't expect the poison of the Xing Xiu sect to be so powerful. Xuan Nan took out a small box from his bosom. He said, Our school's six solar energy pill is effective in countering frost poison. He removed the lid of the box and took out three blood-red pills. He gave two of them to Deng Bai Chuan and fed the third pill to Xuan Tong. Using the time required to eat a meal, Xuan Tong and the other two men slowly combated the chill until it stopped. 
Babu Tong cursed loudly. This iron headed man, d damn it, what kind of palm strength is that? Deng Bai Chuan said, Third younger brother, curse later. Focus on channeling your energy. Babu Tong said, Not true, not true. If I don't curse now, once I die, I can't curse anymore. True. Deng Bai Chuan smiled and said, Don't worry, you won't die. As he said this, he pressed his palm on his back, on his Ji Yang acupoint. He used his internal energy to help him drive out the frost poison. Gong Yugan and Xuan Nan also used their internal energy to assist Feng Bo'e and Xuan Tong to drive out the poison. Xuan Nan and Xuan Tong had deep internal energy. After a while, Xuan Tong gave a long sigh and said, ah, It's done. And he stood up. He continued, Such power. Xuan Nan wanted to assist Bao Bu Tong and Feng Bo'e to drive out the poison, but the other party did not request for his help. If he carelessly tried to offer his help, it might be seen as looking down upon their internal energy. This is seen as breaking of taboo in the martial arts fraternity. Suddenly, Xuan Tong's body swayed. His teeth started chattering again. He immediately sat down and channeled his internal energy and said, Marshal, Marshal, brother, this frost, frost poisonous is very odd. Xuan Nan quickly channeled his internal energy to assist him. The three of them circulated their energy continuously. The frost poison felt better for a moment, but it flared up again immediately. This went on until dusk. The three of them had already consumed three six solar energy pills, but the frost poison was not repelled at all. Xuan Nan brought ten pills with him, and his left, he was left with one. He divided it into three parts and gave the three of them one each. Bao Bu Tong refused to take it. He said, even if I consume a hundred pills, it, it won't. Damn, so the poison is really powerful. Looks like Yo Tanju is super strong now with this poison, right? I bet he's going to use it to try to kill Xiao Feng. Xuan Nan was at his wit's end. He said, Benefactor Bao is correct. This six solar energy pill is not the correct remedy. Our internal energy also can't suppress this yin poison. In my opinion, we have to invite divine physician Shui, nicknamed Enemy of King of Hell. He can cure whatever difficult illness. What is this? He can cure whatever difficult illness. <laughs> mm. Bao Bu Tong said, Great master, you know the whereabouts of this divine physician? Xuan Nan said, Divine physician Sui lives in Ancestor Willow Town at Yangshuji. Yangju Shi. It's not far from here. This old monk has met him many times before. If we go to him and ask for treatment, he probably won't reject. Gu Su Murong family is renowned throughout the world. Divine Physician Shui long admires you. He will definitely be gratified if he can become friends with the four of you. Babu Tong said, Not true, not true. If Divine Physician Shui sees us all, he might not be gratified. Nevertheless, everyone is afraid of my young master's is returning you with your own move. But the Divine Physician Shui is not afraid. In the future, if the Divine Physician is dying, he only has to find my young master, and with his returning you with your own move, his, his old life can be saved. Everyone laughed out loud. They left the pavilion. They reached a small town and hired three carriages to let the three injured men to rest and, and recuperate. Deng Bai Chuan also bought a few horses and gave them to the Shaolin monks to ride. After traveling for four to six hours, the group had to stop and assisted Xuan Tong, Xuan Tong and the other injured men to combat the frost poison. Eventually, Xuan Nan did not have any inhibitions and he used the divine skills of Shaolin to help Bao Bu Tong and Feng Bo Wu to combat the poison. Although the route to Ancestor Willow Town is not too far, but it passed through rugged mountain paths and they had numerous delays, they finally reached the town at dusk on the fourth day.
Divine physician Shui lived within the remote mountain 30 li north of the ancestor Willow Town. Luckily, the divine physician explained the route in detail to, in detail to Xuan Nen when they met at Jushan Manor. The group did not the group did not spend too much effort searching, and they arrived outside the home of the divine physician Shui. Xuan Nan saw several large houses erected beside the river. There was a huge medicine garden in front of the houses. He knew he had arrived at the home of the divine physician. He dismounted and stepped forward. He saw two large white lanterns hanging by the door. He was surprised. He was surprised. The Shui family has a sick family member. He rushed forward a few jung. He saw a few sackcloths hanging over the door. A paper streamer to call back the spirit of the dead was inserted beside the door. It seems the family was holding a funeral. He saw two rows of words written on the paper lanterns. The funeral of Shui Mu Hua died at the age of 55. Xuan Nan had a huge shock. Divine physician Shui can't cure himself, and hence he passed away. This is terrible. Oh, he died. Whoopsies. As he thought about the passing of this old friend, from now on they were separated by the netherworld. He could not help but feel sentimental and sorrowful. Following behind him is Deng Bai Chuan and Gong Yu Gang. They came riding on the horses. Both of them gasped in unison. Ayya! Suddenly they heard cries from within the house. It was the widow. My husband! You have divine medical skills. Who would have expected you to contract this acute disease? You abandoned me and left me alone. Husband, although you are called the enemy of the king of hell, you still can't beat the king of hell. When you go to the netherworld, the king of hell will settle this score with you. You are in for a hard time. After a while, the three carriages and six Shaolin monks arrived. Deng Bai Chuan dismounted and said loudly, Master Xuan Nan from Shaolin Temple, along with some friends, we have some matters and seek the help of the divine physician Sui. His voice rang out like a large bell. The cries from within the house stopped. After a while, an elder stepped out of the house. He was dressed like a servant, tears flowing down his face. He was very sad. He beat his chest and said, Old master died yesterday afternoon. You all. You all can't see him anymore. Xuan Nan pressed his hands together and asked, What is the illness contracted by Mr. Shui? The old servant replied, I don't know. He just suddenly stopped breathing. Old master provides treatment for others. Whatever medicine he prescribes, the illness will be cured. But, but, for himself. Xuan Nan asked again, is there anyone left in Mr. Shui's family? No, none, no one. Deng Bai Chuan and Gong Yugan gave each other a glance. They felt the servants' tone did not contain any sadness when he said it. Moreover, they heard the cries of the widow just now. Xuan Nan sighed and said, ah, Life and death is predestined. Please lead us to his coffin and let us pay our last respects. The old servant said, This. This... okay. He led the group and entered the house. Gong Yugan was one step behind. He whispered to Deng Bai Chuan, Big brother, I think there's something odd about this incident. That old servant's behavior is sus sus suspicious. Deng Bai Chuan nodded his head and followed the old servant to the morning hall. The furnishings in the morning hall is crude. Some items were not placed correctly. The spirit tablet contained the words Memorial Tablet of Shui Mu Hua. The words were strong and forceful. Obviously, it was written by someone with deep learning, definitely not written by the old servant. Deng Bai Chuan noted all these details, but he did not comment. All of them paid their respects before the memorial tablet. Gong Yu Gan turned his head. He saw over ten clothes hanging on a bamboo pole in the courtyard. There were clothes for married women and a few clothes for children. He thought, Divine physician Shui obviously had a wife and children. 
Why did that old servant say there was no one in the family? Xuanan said, We came from afar to seek treatment from the divine physician Xue. We never expected Mr. Xue to pass away. This is really sad. It is getting late now. We wish to stay for the night in your esteemed home. The old servant looked very reluctant. He said, This, this, uh, fine. I invite all of you to rest in the hall. I will go prepare the meals. Xuanan said, Housekeeper, you don't have to spend too much effort. Simple rice and vegetable is enough. The old servant replied, Yes, yes. Everyone, please sit down and rest. He led the group to the outer hall. He then entered the inner hall. After a long time, the old servant did not come out to serve tea. Xuanan pondered. This old servant just experienced the death of his master. It, were, it is unavoidable that he is confused. Ah, my martial brother Xuanzong contracted this frost poison. How should we deal with it? The group waited for over an hour, but the old servant still did not appear. Bao Butong felt restless. He said, I will go find some water to drink. Xu Zhu said, Mr. Bao, please sit down and rest. I will go help the old servant to boil the water. He stood up and entered the inner hall. Gong Yugan wanted to ex examine the movements around the house. He said, I will accompany you. Both of them entered the inner hall. The residence of Shui was quite large. They had five halls, but they did not see the slightest trace of a person's presence. Both of them entered the kitchen, but the old servant could not be found anywhere. Gong Yugan knew something was not right. He quickly went back to the outer hall and said, Something is not right in this house. I think the divine physician Sui might be faking his death. Xuanan stood up and said, What should we do about this? Great master, I want to examine the coffin. The group rushed into the morning hall. He extended his hand to lift the coffin. Suddenly he had a strange thought. He quickly withdrew his hand. He took a shirt hanging on the bamboo pole and wrapped it around his hands. He gathered his internal energy and lifted the coffin. He felt it was very heavy. The coffin definitely did not contain a corpse. He said, Divine Physician Shui really faked his death. Feng Bo'e took out his blade and said, Pry open the coffin lid and look inside. This person is known as the Divine Physician. He definitely has an, he is definitely an expert in poison. Fourth younger brother, you have to be careful. Feng Bo'e said, I will keep that in mind. He inserted the tip of the blade between the lid and the coffin. He pushed upwards. There was a creaking sound, and the coffin lid was slowly lifted. Feng Bo -e held his breath. He, he, was afraid. he was afraid poison powder might come out of the coffin. This translator, why, is he, why, does, it, why does he do this? He writes he is to, uh, he writes he is as his. His afraid? Stop. It messes me up every time. Bao Butong walked to the courtyard and caught two chicken. He returned to the morning hall. He raised his hands and threw the two chickens. The chickens crowed loudly and moved past the coffin and landed in front of the memorial tablet. The chickens moved towards the direction of the courtyard, but after a few steps it collapsed. Their feet twitched a few times and it stopped moving and died. Oh, there is poison. The wind blew from the corridor. The feathers on the chickens all scattered and flew up in the air. Everyone was dumbstruck when they saw this. The chickens just died of poisoning and all, it, all their feathers immediately dropped off. It can be said that the poison was really violent. No one dared to go near the coffin. Xuanan said, 
Benefactor Deng, what is the reason behind this? Why did Divine Physician Shui fake his own death? As he finished this, he leapt up. His, his left hand grabbed the crossbeam. He looked inside the coffin. The coffin was filled with rocks. Within the rocks was a big bowl. The bowl was filled with clear water. <clears throat> the bowl was obviously the poison. Xuan An shook his head and jumped down. He said, Even if Benefactor Shui refuses to provide treatment, there's no need to lay such an elaborate trap to harm us. Shaolin has no grievance with him. This kind of behavior isn't it unjustifiable. Could it be... Could it be... He said, could it be, twice and shut his mouth. He thought, could it be he has some huge grievances with the Gusu Murong family? Babu Tong said, There's no need for you to guess. My young master, Mu Rong, has never met Divine Physician Shui. There's no need to even mention hatred or vengeance. If he is our enemy, even if our poison is ten times more unbearable, we will never come here and beg him for treatment. You think the one surnamed Bao and surnamed Feng is garbage? Xuan Nan placed his hands together and said, Benefactor Bao is correct. This old monk guesses wrongly. He was an eminent monk, since his heart did suspect them. Even if he did not say it out loud, he should still shoulder the blame. Deng Bai Chuan said, Poison gas is filling the entire area. It is, not a con it is not convenient to stay here. Let's go back to the inner hall. The group went into the inner hall. They discussed with each other, but still could not guess why the divine physician Shui faked his own death and lay the poison trap. Bao Bu Tong said, this divine physician Shui is so vicious. Let's just use fire and torch this entire place down. Deng Bai Chuan said, We can't do that. The divine physician Shui is still considered to be a friend of the Shaolin Temple. Since Master Xuan Nan is here, we cannot act rashly. Currently, the surroundings was pitch black. There was no light in the hall. Everyone was thirsty and hungry, but they dared not drink the tea and water found in the house. Xuan Nan said, Let's go to a nearby farmhouse to ask for some water and food. Benefactors, what do you think of this idea? Deng Bai Chuan said, Yes, but it's best that we don't eat any food or drink within a three li radius. This divine physician Sui put a lot of effort in his schemes. We, he won't stop at just putting a coffin. He will feel terribly apologetic if Great Master gets implicated again. <clears throat> Although he and Gong Yugan knew the trouble was not caused by them, but the reputation of the Gu Su Murongs is returning you with your own move is, was simply too great. They made quite a lot of enemies in the martial arts fraternity. Some relatives of the divine physician Shui might have been accidentally killed, and this blood debt is placed on Gu Su Murong family. <clears throat> All of them stood up and walked towards the front door. Suddenly, they saw bright lights flashing in the west. A stream of flame dispersed and turned into a green color. It covered the entire sky and came raining down. It was magnificent and beautiful. Feng Bo said, Yeah, who released this firework? Now is not the Lantern Festival or the Mid-Autumn Festival. Why are people releasing fireworks? After a while, orange-yellow fireworks rose up to the sky. It looked like thousands of flying stars colliding with each other. Gong Yugan thought about it and said, This is not fireworks. It's the signal from the enemy to execute a surprise attack. Feng Bu shouted, Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's fight to our heart's content. Deng Bai Chuan said, Third brother and fourth brother, go wait in the hall. I will block the entrance. Second brother will block the rear. Master Xuan Nen, this matter does not concern Shaolin. Please, just stand aside and watch. There's no need to help. Our Mu Rong family thanks you for your great kindness. You want bells for the chickens? Alright, poor chickens. Xuan Nen said, Benefactor Deng, why are you saying this? 
Even if the enemy has some hatred towards you, there must be some truth and falsehood or misunderstanding. We have to be impartial. We cannot allow them to take advantage of your misfortune and rely on their numbers to win. If it's the gang of people dispatched by divine physician Shui, they lay down this trap and try to poison us. We share a common enemy. How can we stand by and do nothing? Everyone, prepare yourself to meet the enemy. Hui Feng, Xu Zhu, and the rest of the monks agreed in unison. Xuan Tong said, Benefactor Deng, uh, I and your two brothers share the same poison. We should collaborate and repel the enemy. As they were talking, another two fireworks rose up into the sky. This time it was much nearer. After a while, another two appeared. A total of six had been fired. The shape and color of the fireworks were different. Some looked like a large pen, some looked like chessboards, some looked like an axe, some looked like large peony. After the fireworks had been fired, the sky was pitch black again. Xuan Nan ordered the six Shaolin disciples to guard all four sides of the house, but after a long time, they did not hear any movement from the enemy. Everyone held their breath and focused their attention. After a time, the time taken to eat a meal, they suddenly heard a female voice singing to the east. For days my eyebrows are unpainted and my handkerchief soaked in tears. Since your majesty cares nothing for me, why should I care for my looks? How can a mere chest of pearls bring solace to my lonely existence? When the voice, singing, when the voice finished singing the song, it immediately it turned to the voice of a man and said, Ai yo, Lady Jiang, I have not seen you for a long time. I miss you very much. I bestow you a string of pearls. Lady Jiang, please accept it. After finishing, the voice turned into a female and said, Your Majesty already have Consort Yang as your companion. You even abandoned your court sessions. When did you ever place this ill-fated woman in your heart? Huh. As she said this, she started crying. Shuju and the rest of the monks were unfamiliar with worldly affairs. The person suddenly became male and female. Not knowing what kind of trick it is, they felt miserable. Deng Baichuan and the rest knew the person was acting out the story between Emperor Ming of Tang and the Plum Consort. Suddenly becoming the Plum Consort, suddenly becoming the Emperor. The voice and tone remarkably accurate. But this person suddenly appeared at this juncture. They had some misgivings and were unsure about the person's intentions. The person said, My lady, don't cry. Quickly, prepare a feast. You will play the flute and I will personally sing a tune for you to relieve your worries. The person's voice changed to a female and said, Lowly concubine washes her face with tears every evening. I only hope to see your majesty again. Now that I get to see you again, I will die contented. Goodbye. <coughs> Bao Butong shouted loudly, I am Lu Shan, Tang Emperor Li Longji, you have a muddle-headed emperor. Quickly, hand over Yang Yu Huan. The person stopped crying immediately and gave an ah sound. Apparently, he had a huge shock. The surroundings went silent again. And we're done. <laughs> Whew. That was a long chapter. Uh. So these are stories that um probably classic stories that I've never heard of. You're confused by this ending? Well apparently the the vine physician Shui um faked his death and I guess he trapped them here. He tried to kill them, but now they're trapped and I guess they're coming towards they're coming, uh, his men are coming to kill them, I guess. It seems that way. But the question is, why is he doing this? Because it seems these people had no quarrel with the divine physician, so why is he doing it? <sighs> All right. I think we're done. No drink today, because I have a big headache, and I'm super sore from the vaccine. So I think I'm going to go to sleep. <sighs> ah. 
All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining. All right. Hope you guys like the chapter. Think something good is going to happen in the next chapter. It seems like it. All right. Thanks for joining. I love you. I'll see you next week. Bye.